Hi there, in this video we will learn about Sandmeyer's reaction which is a named reaction for the preparation of aryl halides like chlorobenzene and bromobenzene. But Sandmeyer reaction can't start without knowing this salt out here which is benzene disonium chloride also known as BDC for benzene as you can see there is a benzene here disonium as this group n2 plus which you see out here is disonium and this one is chloride hence the name benzene disonium chloride this is the starting material for sandmeyer reaction how is this bdc prepared we need to know this first and then from this bdc we will know how to prepare our aryl halide all right so what we can do is we can start with aniline now, this is the primary aromatic amine we are taking, which is aniline out here. This aniline is reacted with sodium nitride in the presence of hydrochloric acid at low temperatures, 0 to 5 degrees Celsius. So, you can see that NaNO2 plus HCl will combine together to form HONO, which we can write like this, HNO2. And this is nothing but nitrous acid. So, nitrous acid is produced from this reacting mixture of NaNO2 and HCl. 0 to 5 degrees Celsius is maintained because this species which is formed out here, which is benzene disonium chloride, which I can simply call as BDC, is very unstable. So that it can be stabilized, we need these lower temperature conditions. If the temperature conditions are higher, immediately this nitrogen gas will evolve out and what is formed as a result is a phenol rather than benzene disonium chloride. So, remember this, if temperature conditions are higher, we will not end up getting BDC. Or in other words, we can say that at temperatures above 298 Kelvin, benzene disonium chloride does form but rapidly decomposes in aqueous medium to give phenol. Okay, now from aniline we have got benzene disonium chloride by taking this reaction mixture of sodium nitrite and HCl in the presence of low temperature conditions of 0 to 5 degree Celsius. Now once you have this BDC, now the reaction begins. BDC is now reacted with cuprous chloride to obtain chlorobenzene and you can see nitrogen gases evolved out. Similarly, if in BDC we add cuprous bromide, we get bromobenzene and again nitrogen gases evolved out. So, we can say that at the place of this N2 plus Cl minus, what is coming? A chloro group is coming. So, what kind of a reaction it is? We can say it's a substitution reaction, right? Also, we can observe that here we are using copper in the plus 1 oxidation state. It's cuprous chloride. Cuprous chloride and cuprous bromide for the production of chlorobenzene and bromobenzene respectively acts as a catalyst. That means CuCl and CuBr, they are not consumed in the course of reaction. Okay, now it is quite interesting to see the mechanism of Sandmeyer reaction. So what we do is we start with benzene disonium chloride and to it we add cuprous chloride. Now, observe this chloride ion in BDC, okay? The chloride ion from benzene disonium chloride is transferred to cuprous chloride, generating this complex, you see, CuCl2 minus, where copper is still in plus 1 oxidation state. So, here you can see there is no redox reaction that has taken place. It's just an ion exchange which has taken place. That means an ion from benzene disonium chloride has just moved to CuCl giving you this complex. Now what happens is interesting. Now observe this Cu plus 1 ion out here in this complex. This copper plus 1 ion is going to donate one electron to benzene disonium ion. Now this triggers the loss of nitrogen gas. You see the nitrogen gas has evolved out resulting in the formation of this phenyl free radical okay and uh, do make sure you observe this huh copper plus one has now changed to copper two plus so now what we have got is cupric chloride 
Okay, now next step is quite interesting. This phenyl free radical is now going to react with this cupric chloride. Okay, so this phenyl free radical abstracts a chlorine atom. And what gets formed? You get chlorobenzene. And what you get back from cupric chloride? You get back cuprous chloride. This is what you started with. This is what you get back. And that's why we can say that cuprous chloride is the catalyst of the reaction as it does not get consumed in the course of reaction. Okay, so in nutshell what is happening here is this cupric chloride in this reaction is acting like an oxidizing agent and itself is getting reduced from plus 2 oxidation state to plus 1 oxidation state thereby regenerating cuprous chloride for the cycle to continue. Okay. Now, there is an interesting question waiting for you. My question is, can we prepare iodobenzene or fluorobenzene from Sandmeyer reaction? Answer lies in the mechanism itself. Talking about CuI, okay, cuprous iodide. This cuprous iodide is very less soluble. And for the mechanism to proceed efficiently, this copper plus one must be available in solution to donate an electron, okay? But hey, let me also tell you, that's not even the problem. We don't use cuprous iodide because iodide ion does the job all by itself. So that's why you will see how we actually make direct use of the potassium iodide and we do not make use of this cuprous iodide for the formation of iodobenzene. Okay, now talking about the formation of fluorobenzene. Again, let's think of CuF. This is also very less soluble. And like I said, for the mechanism to proceed efficiently, we want copper plus one in solution to donate an electron. And there is an additional problem. This complex that needs to be formed, CuF2 minus, cannot be formed. It doesn't get formed, okay? So no proper redox cycle or aryl radical formation can take place. Hence, no fluorobenzene. It seems that the aryl halide which is possible from this mechanism is only chlorobenzene and bromobenzene, not iodobenzene and fluorobenzene. So how can we prepare iodobenzene or fluorobenzene? Well, we can use another method. What we can do is we can simply take benzene disonium chloride and to it we can add potassium iodide. Yes, directly, nothing else required. No cuprous iodide required. Directly we can add potassium iodide and what we get as a result is iodobenzene. Again, in this benzene disonium chloride, this nitrogen gas is evolved out and what else we get is potassium chloride. So this replacement of disonium group with iodine doesn't require cuprous iodide and we can just directly use Ki. It's as simple as that. And we should not call this reaction as Sandmeyer reaction. We're going to call it Sandmeyer reaction only when we have cuprous chloride or cuprous bromide, not with potassium iodide. Okay, what about the other one? How can we prepare fluorobenzene? Well, we have another very interesting named reaction coming up, which is this one, baal sheeman reaction, in which what we do is, we again start with benzene disonium chloride and to it we add HBF4. This HBF4 is called fluoroboric acid. Okay, HBF4, fluoroboric acid. And what we get as a result is, again, look at the name, benzene disonium tetrafluoroborate. Okay, let's decode the name, benzene. And there is this same N2 plus group, right? So, disonium. And for this BF4 minus, we are calling tetrafluoro. Can you see there are four fluorines here? So tetrafluoroborate, which on heating is going to give you this nitrogen gas is going to again get evolved out like it happened in Sandmeyer reaction. And you can also see what else you're getting is BF3 as the side product. So one of the fluorines is remaining. And that is what we observe here as fluorobenzene. So this is also a replacement which is happening and a substitution reaction which is taking place. And this is how we prepare fluorobenzene. Again, the name of the reaction is not Sandmeyer reaction, but we shall call it baal sheeman reaction. So there we go. We now know the preparation of aryl halide 
no matter we are talking about fluorobenzene, chlorobenzene, bromobenzene or idobenzene.